Greetings, you mighty champion. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and I'm excited to tell you about who you are in Christ. What happened to you when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Praise God. Jesus said, as you know by now, if you've been watching these episodes, that he came for a specific reason, John 10.10. 10. He came that the believer might have life and have life more abundantly an overcroppage of life, so much life you don't know what to do with it, so you give it away to others. That word that Jesus used, of course, is zoe, Z-O-E, and we call it zoe for some reason, but anyway, uh, that word means the same kind of life that Jesus has, the same kind of life that your heavenly Father has, the life of God. Wow, that's pretty amazing, praise God. All right, so if you've been studying who you are in Christ and the power of the new birth and how it changed your very nature, not just forgave you of your sins and send you to heaven when you die, you'll, you'll be confident that Jeremiah 33, 3 is true for you, that you call on God and he answers you and shows you great and mighty things that you know not. And so you're seeing things every day through different eyes because you've got the life, the God kind of life, on the inside of you, man. That's amazing. All right. When a new creation being, that's you, speaks the word of God, that's you. It's exactly as if Jesus himself was speaking. It's same word, same word, right? Jesus said, the words I speak unto you are not my own, but my father, but my father's. Okay. So when Jesus commanded disease to leave sick bodies, it was the Father speaking through him. Today, when you use your faith and you use the mighty name of Jesus and you command disease to leave the bodies of sick people, it's as though the Father himself gave that order through you and it must be obeyed. John 8, 26 and John uh, 12, 49 and 50, I'm pretty sure. Now listen, I'm side note and I'm going to give you a diamond right here. All right. Very few people in the world know about how God works. In Psalm 103, verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do the commandments and hearken unto the voice of God's word. Okay. So the angels are assigned to do one thing on earth and that's hearken unto the voice of the Word of God. So when you speak the Word of God, angels don't know whether you're speaking or if God has just spoken because it's still the Word of God whether you speak it or whether God speaks it. Now, of course, we have to add our faith to it and believe for the good outcome but the angels don't know the difference. They hearken unto the voice of the Word of God. And so you give voice to the Word of God, but it's still the Word of God. I hope, you're, I hope I'm saying this the right way so that you can get it, so that you make it a point to speak the Word of God against every obstacle and problem and sickness and discouragement, whatever comes into your life, whatever problem, you find the Word of God, the Scriptures, right? and then speak the scripture, speak the word against the problem like Jesus did when he was tempted of the devil for uh, after 40 days of fasting. He said, Satan, it is written three times. So you've got to say, Satan, it is written, okay? So you got to know that. Now, because God has imparted into you his zoe, that means his nature, his ability, his life, okay? That nature and ability and life will produce in you and through you the same kind of works, the same kind of results that Jesus would produce if he were here present on the earth in your place. Now I'm saying some big things. I would love to tell you about David killing Goliath and the woman with the issue of blood. Those are amazing, great stories. But I've got to tell you who you are because so, so many Christians have an inferiority complex when it comes to God. They're living, they have a, I'm going to say it this way, a sin consciousness 
that which produces condemnation and condemnation cannot receive from God. So I'm just pounding you on who you are in Christ and what he made you to be through his death, burial, and his resurrection. God is saying to you, you are my child. You're the apple of my eye, Psalm 17, 8. I only think good things about you all the time. I have great plans for your future. Jeremiah 11 tells us that so we can say what God said, right? You have cried unto me, and I have heard you, and I have delivered you, Psalm 3, verse 4, Psalm 120, verse 1, verses like that. I listen to you. I hear your voice every time you call, my child. I am your father. And Jesus, my firstborn son, the father could say, is seated at my right hand, Hebrews 10, uh, 12, where he ever lives to make intercession for you. Romans 8, 34, you have an advocate with me. His name is Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the living God, just like you're a son and daughter of God now, 1 John 2, 1. He is your mediator, your go-between, between you and me. I listen to you, the Father would tell you. I, I, I hearken unto the voice of your word when you're speaking my word, but Jesus is here, right here with me elbowing me in the ribs saying, give it to him, Father, give it to him. Uh, that would be uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. So I'm kind of teasing and I'm making light of this, but you got to know that Jesus is your high priest, uh, Hebrews 2.17. You got to know that the main thing is that Jesus is the head of the body of Christ, the church on this earth, Ephesians 1.22. And I'd like you to focus on memorizing verse 15 through 22 of Ephesians 1 and pray that over yourself, pray that over your friends, pray that over your family, okay? And he's the supplier of your every need, Philippians 4.19. So God would tell you today, don't be like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed to and fro with every wind of adversity that comes your way. Don't be double-minded. Don't be two, of two opinions. When I promise you something in my word, I want to fulfill my word. The purpose of my promise to you, my, my son, my daughter, is its fulfillment. Now, I want to make a side note here and tell you this. A faltering or wavering belief and, a con and, and confession that's only present when the word of God has not yet prevailed over your reasoning faculties uh, is what causes us to faint in our mind, to be double-minded. We don't see the results after we pray. You got to keep on standing. You got to keep the switch of faith turned on. You every day got to say, Father, I thank you that you said my needs are met and I thank you that my every need is met in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that this week, week I need $325 to manifest over and above my job. You tell God stuff like that. The word of God must prevail over your minds, over your mind's natural judgment and what others are speaking to you to keep you wavering and doubting. Don't waver. Don't doubt. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry speaking the mighty word of God to you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Keep listening. Keep feeding your faith. Keep starving your doubts. Let those doubts die and keep hearing the word of God. Philemon 6 says this in King James, only in King James, that the communication or the outworking of your faith will become effectual, effective, powerful as you acknowledge the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. I am the head and not the tail in Christ. I'm above only. My God supplies my every need. I cannot be defeated. I will not quit. Say things like that in Jesus' name. Acknowledge that you got the life of God in you. That's what we're talking about. I don't know what lesson this is, maybe like 15 or 18, but acknowledge that the greater one is on the inside of you than he that's in the world to put you over. Acknowledge that you're not going to quit and that God is with you. Listen, I'm Pastor Glenn once again. Please follow and subscribe below. Use your faith. Use your good attitude today and make a great day.